Good evening, everybody, and welcome again to the Midnight Ride. I'm your host, David Carrico, and once again, we'll be taking you into the midnight hour with cutting-edge topics and conversation, and our old pal John Pounders is helping us hook this up from out in Sacramento, California. How you doing out there, John? I'm doing good, man. I'm out here at an old military base, actually, McCollum Military Base, and uh, they've got a hotel here now and conference center as well, but there's officers club next door um i have to say one of the weirdest places i've ever been in my life really neat but at the same time uh different darpa's right down the road and they have a 14 a story i think it's 13 or 14 stories underneath the ground is where most of the building is only one story is on the top and then the company that makes their explosives forms right next door uh you have um a naval academy or naval uh hang out over there for all the Navy pilots that hang out or the, I'm sorry, the air force pilots. And, uh, you have the place where air force one flies in not too long from here. The actual rooms we're staying in are officers quarters for this military base. And, um, we actually have a Royal bloodline, Stuart Royal, uh, person that runs this place here. Very interesting. So uh, I'll leave the rest to your imagination and I will think we can talk about it another time, but I'll let you guys get started. Cause I know this show is going to be amazing and awesome. So. Well, thank you very much, John. And we do have an awesome show tonight. We have an awesome topic. We're going to be talking about area 51, Dulce Montauk and all things related. And we'll have as our very special guest, Scott Hensler. Welcome back to the Midnight Ride, Scott. Yes, thank you. It has been a year as we were talking, and the subjects that we have tonight hopefully will put some uh, pieces in the puzzle to help everyone understand what's really going on. Yeah, and I hadn't realized it had been a year since you've been on. I mean, time flies so fast, but I know the last time you were on, we talked about Project Montauk and had a tremendous conversation and uh we're just so looking forward to where this is going to go tonight and since it's been a year uh you've been on fojc and uh now you see tv before but since it's been a year why don't you reintroduce yourself to our listeners and tell them a little bit about uh what you do and go ahead and put your contact information out there okay. and just tell a little about what's going on all right. Well, again, Scott Hensler is my name, and I run a website called Tinfoil Hat Club. I used to have just Scott Hensler Network, and it was basically mostly Christian theme. Everything based around the Great Commission of Jesus Christ, Matthew 28, deliverance, exorcism, breaking curses, trying to get people out of um, the, the issues that seem to plague most of the United States, most of the world. And when I say that, it's because of deception it's health problems, it's um, anxieties, it's fears, all the things that seem to come on to everyone in these last days. And of course, it's been this way for some time. Now, that's also evolved into helping people who are targeted individuals. And that one gets a little sticky, and maybe we can talk more about that. But my main premise is to separate the issues that you're having, whether they're generational or whether they're sins that you're carrying with you that give legal right to demonic activity, and through the deliverance of setting you free. Again, Matthew 28 prophesied in Isaiah 61 just exactly what the Great Commission of Jesus Christ was, and that's to heal the sick and set the captives free, restore sight to the blind, have the lame walk, bind up the brokenhearted, preach the gospel, make disciples of all men, and, and by getting you to be or come back to be the men and women of God that God intended you to be, you can join us in this fight for the last days. It is a remnant. We, we who have our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life have a great task in front of us. And so I'm trying to get you to be the best that you can be. And the subjects tonight, I deal with on one-to-one -one basis of those who have been abducted those that um, have been my lab abducted, which means military abducted, not just uh, those things of UFO or greys or extraterrestrial. When I say extraterrestrial, we'll get into that a little bit more, but it's uh, all based in demonic. And that's really the main premise tonight is for you to understand that difference. Well, I am just thrilled to have you back on, Scott. And Scott does a tremendous job. He always 
uh, is well researched and very biblical balanced in what he does. And in the area of targeted individuals, I don't think there's anyone out there has a grasp on this like Scott does. So we're very thankful for him to bring his expertise tonight to the Midnight Ride. So Scott, take us away. Area 51, Dulce, and wherever you want to take us tonight. Okay. Well, I've done uh, an extensive amount of teaching on my shows, which you can go to Blog Talk or Mixler or Podomatic. I have a lot of YouTube videos. And so I'm I'm just going to expound on that. But I again, I want to point to the issue of the demonic uh, grasp of this whole thing. So when we talk about Montauk, when we talk about Dulce, when we talk about Area 51, we're talking about those things that lead to the New World Order. This is a way of controlling the population. This is a way of eliminating population, genocide, using experiments uh, to, to find out what's the best way to eliminate us. But at the same time, there's rituals that are involved. We have Luciferian agendas. We have those in the occult or in the military that are in the government, those that have basically sold us out to the demonic, meaning the fallen angel offsprings. Um, when, when I talk about greys and I talk about extraterrestrial, we're talking about hybrids. We're, we're talking about things much like Nephilim that have been on this uh, earth for some time, but it has evolved into a organized group that have infiltrated the United States government, have created the United Nations. We have now bases all throughout the United States, all throughout the world that are very strategically placed very, very well built uh, as a stronghold. One thing is to continue continuity of government, which is not our government of the United States, meaning it's not for the people, it's for those who are in control. But in these bases, again, there's been an agreement with extraterrestrials or greys. I'll just call them greys. And when, again, when I say grey, I don't mean a demon, but I mean one that has been derived uh, from, from the offspring. And on this long process that has been here for some time, the agreement that they have come into with the United States is established Area 51, Dulce, um, even bases throughout Colorado. There's even 11 in Idaho where I was living before. I'm now in Reno. But when we truly understand what they're doing, we see that this is such an atrocity. This is a, a, a major human infraction. And this is something that's it's so hard to comprehend that other human beings would do such a thing. But again, when, when we understand when God calls someone wicked or refers to them as wicked, it's someone who has been found uh, guilty in their sins without repentance. And so these who would do such things, their conscience has been seared. They're, they're making money. They're obtaining power whether it's through financial or through sex or through obtaining of properties and, and just setting a stage for them to live lavishly. Uh, people who are in the military, whether it's Marines, Army, Navy, uh, the Pentagon, Congress, even the presidents, that either way you look at it, that us in this last day, the remnant few, those who, who uh, have the seal of God on our forehead and our names written in Lamb's Book of Life, that we're the main target because we're the ones who stand between their evil deeds. We're the ones who stand between their success. Now, the book of Revelation is quite clear that there are some really horrible things coming. Now, one thing we need to understand that we have not been given a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And so with the understanding of who we are in Christ, with the deliverances, meaning breaking the curses off, that keep us impoverished, uh, that, that keep us in uh, bad relationships, that, that have open doors, that allow demonic issues on. When that's all removed and clear, you are the main um, ability to stand against the wiles of the enemy because whatever fiery dart is thrown at you is not going to stick with the full armor of God and being able to enter back into relationship with God with his hands upon you. And so in these last days when we expose Dulce and Area 51 and some of the others, that is a task that is um, dangerous. 
Now, there's many that have come forth, not necessarily Christians. Uh, we had, you know, William Cooper. We had Phil Schneider. They're both dead. And by the way, they, they died um, not just mysteriously, but uh, definitely with contracts out on them and, and dying in such manners that is uh, wish, wish would not happen to us. Yeah. But again, these were men who were brave enough to come forward and teach us and show us and educate us on this. And then others have taken... Uh, the ball and ran with it too. Many have lost their lives. But the point of it is, is that as as we know who we are in Christ, as as we are bond servants, we we are one to stand in the name and the authority and the righteousness of Jesus Christ, that is the Son of God, that this job and task that we have is to rescue others. Because if we can bring the people who are in captive within Dulce, within these bases who are being experimented on, then just think of the revival. Think of the the task of saving the children, saving uh, teenagers and those of of, uh, middle and and older age. The the point of it is, is that the atrocities against mankind is evil. And if we allow it to continue then that means that we're in agreement with evil. Well, I am not. That's why for the past 18 years, I have been doing deliverance. I've been doing what the public calls exorcisms. And in either case, when we find out that when we deliver someone, when we bring them out, they are still people with a conscience. They're still people able to, to make their own decisions. And by the way, by getting this stuff off of them, they can make a clear decision mm-hmm. with serve and that's very important yeah. but at the same time by allowing them to to um, to make that decision then then the blessings come upon them and and then they can join us so what would you like to know well the um, proposition that you've laid out that there is direct collusion between our government and extraterrestrial fallen powers, which are devils, fallen angels, and they're brood, the Nephilim. This really uh, just pushes a lot of people back. It's something they can't get their mind around. This is something I firmly believe. And this is something that uh, you threw out a couple names there, William Cooper and Phil Schneider, two men that gave their lives mm-hmm. to be whistleblowers, to tell of the, the these things that are going on. And it, It's uh, disturbing. Uh, Mr. Cooper was gunned down by authorities and Phil Schneider. My goodness, the pictures. He died very badly. Uh, It's very graphic the way Mr. Schneider died, but very believable, very credible witnesses. And if we did not even have the testimony of these men just from Scripture, the antediluvian world and the antediluvian model is in the days of Noah, of that direct interaction of the ancient governments with the fallen powers that rose up in opposition to God. We should suspect no less than that to be fulfilled in our day. So I think you're absolutely spot on. And this is a basis premise for understanding this paradigm, that this is exactly what we're looking at. We're looking at the cooperation of human powers with the fallen powers to establish the government of Satan in the earth right now. This is exactly what we're talking about. And if we don't understand it for what it is, we're going to miss it. And uh, I think you, you, you're you spot on there. Well, I'd like to start out with a little bit of history. In 1909, the U.S. Cavalry, uh, while chasing some banditos out of Mexico, came into Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and found a cave. And as they entered into it, they discovered grays, they discovered craft. Now, this was the cavalry. This was a military of the time that was not equipped to understand, to comprehend, and so they just figured they were demons. But in either case, this was one of the first establishment of contact. And in 1933, an agreement with France and Britain, the United States, because there was so much UFO activity that they decided to come together in the investigation of this. Now, there's there's some times that uh, over overlap. But in 1954, the, the, the Grotta Treaty was one that Eisenhower came into agreement with the Greys 
that what he did is he allowed them to to basically abduct humans, to take cattle or any other type of uh, beast that would be in the woods, and to experiment on them. But when we when we understand who Satan is, and there is no truth in him that he is a liar, that the Greys broke the treaty, and what they've been doing ever since is not just ones and twos of people. They've been taking thousands, and now we have over a million worldwide yearly missing without a trace. So where are they going? Why are we not finding remnants of them? Why are we not finding at least their teeth? I used to do homicide investigation. I used to be a man tracker, and if you find teeth, you find a jaw, you find bone, you can usually trace it to the individual. Well, none of this is being found. So what's taking place? Well, with the agreement with the United States, even though the treaty has been broken and it has gotten to a level that's out of hand, because of the technology exchange, they're willing to keep their mouth shut and even to build more bases. And as they continue to build these bases, they continue to take more people. And this is from infants to teenagers to middle-aged to full adults. And as I mentioned, you know, a million a year, that's a lot of people. Wow. Within these bases, we have captivity. We have, we have, unfortunately, these particular types of uh, hybrids, the greys, they're not necessarily cannibal in the sense that they would just eat somebody, but because of our organs, they, they secrete the fluids, uh, the hormones, um, the different um, nutrients that they would see out of the human body. So the people that are abducted and when they're uh, cannibalized, so to speak. It's a very gruesome, very terrible task, just like if you were to take any anything and, and grind it up. So again, when we understand that this is taking place, and we understand that children are also a big part of this, that at the same time, the rituals that take place, because when when there is an infraction against a child, a child which doesn't really know the sins of, of an adult, though we are born to sin, that they're probably the purest that the evil can, can have from the human race. And so by the abduction of children, by the dismemberment and the, the rituals and the bloodletting, and, and I'm sorry to bring this up, but this is what this is about, that by this means, then they're gained more demonic power than those things that are in the spirit then have the ability to come into the physical. So when you have bases all over the United States, then you have blood that has been spilt. And so every state has at least one base, most typically three. As I mentioned, Idaho 11, which is quite a few for that state. Uh, Denver, I think, has nine, or, or Colorado in itself, Fort Collins, underneath the, um, uh, the airport, uh, Cheyenne, and various places that these are tainted. These are now an abomination. And so the ground of the United States, and of course we have abortion in the United States, and even the kidneys of the aborted children, the fetuses are used as sugar, Pepsi Corporation, many others. So we have this, this uh, cannibalism that's taking place, whether it's through abortion and consumption and, and products, or the underground bases, in either case, this is the next step to bring us into these last days. And John was telling me earlier about going up. Uh, he's in Sacramento, California, and they have the DARPA facility there, 14 stories underground. And he said that they just went over near that, and immediately people began following them. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's face it, they can do whatever they want to do there. And the, the things that come to mind are just uh, not very pretty because they're, they're the works of the evil one. And these things that you've outlined, they're the very premise of the mystery religions. They're the basis of Crowley and Satanism that through the defilement of the innocent, the taking of life, the drinking of the blood, that occult powers and extension of life can be gained. And this is just being implemented supernaturally and scientifically. This is the way it's always been. It's been a cooperation 
of the fallen realm with the earthly realm to implement the things of the evil one. So these things are not new and we recognize them for what they are. And that way, as the children of God, uh, we can be that remnant. And, you know, we're not going to uh, be able to overthrow uh, and clean up all these underground bases. But what we can do, we can be God's remnant, just like you said. We can get free of the influence of these evil powers. And be, we can be a testimony for the gospel and see that remnant grow. And uh, so that's what it's all about. Absolutely. You know, in 1958, Eisenhower knew that this had gotten out of control and he wanted to have Area 51 inspected. Now, let's look at Area 51. Area, Area 51 is, is a part of the Bureau of Land Management. The, in fact, Idaho, or, um, Nevada is about 80% federal land. Well, they were denying him access. And so he had two CIA agents that needed to come investigate. And they said, no, you do not have the right to come here. Well, how can that be? Well, it turns out that there's 15 security levels above the president. And then when we look at Area 51, it was actually under the Atomic Commission. And this was a citizen-held position. And the corporation um, documents that they have for their establishment made the agreement through, through the uh, Congress that gave them a, a status above the president. And... Eisenhower was so infuriated that he asked for the first army out of Colorado to come down on them if he wouldn't let them in. Well, they agreed to it. Uh, the agents came and when they found out that there was more going on, such as craft, there was um, the ability for stargates, portholes, uh, different things that uh, the president was not aware of. Well, the CIA, we know, is not exactly on the up and up. So once the CIA got a handle on what was really going on, they came into agreement uh, with the Atomic Commission. And so now the CIA has been using that area for all their dirty work. It's, um, again, one of the main areas of technology that is uh, derived from fallen angels to bring us into a new level of communication, computers, spying, satellites, weaponry, mind control, uh, again, you know, as we talk about Montauk a little bit later, that all of this has been, again, um, when, when you have a government that is, that is um, above the people, which is unfortunately what's happened here in the United States, that was never meant to be, then the desire for power and control of the people becomes even greater. And so with the population in the United States, with those who are uh, believe in the right to bear arms, that this is a country that if it were to rise up would definitely be a threat. So they were working overtime for the abilities to control the people. And so Area 51 was one of the strategic areas for that. But also the ability to... Now, now please understand, when we talk about extraterrestrials, again, I'm, I'm more of the... Um, rule that it's more interdimensional, that it's more spiritual connection with those that are of, you know, you say antediluvian, we have those that are of the Nephilim. But what they've been able to do is they've been able to go into the spirit. And we also know that um, as, as astral projecting. And so with remote viewing, with the ability to move into other locations, whether it's the Soviet Union or China, uh, that has been one of the goals, and that's uh, Project Looking Glass. So that's uh, uh, Area 51, a little bit 12 miles south, which is uh, S3, S4 areas. Now, when, when this technology gets away and gets into the wrong hands, which could be used for good, but obviously those who are in control of it now have no intentions of giving anything to humanity. And so there is a desire by the evil ones, by the greys, by those that are in the New World Order, to eliminate 6, 7 billion people, bringing it down to 500 million. We know this by the Georgia Guystones. And so everything at Area 51 and anything that's been transferred to Dulce or any technology that 
has come out of Montauk. And by the way, the underground base there, along with Plum Island, is still in, in is intact. That this is again a a purpose of genocide for mass. And then those who are actually within the facilities now, that time has gone by that those uh, there's been people who have been born there. That's all that they know is the underground bases. They're workers. They're part of the scientists. They're part of uh, the engineers, along with the abduction of, of people from around the world. But again, what we have is we have a conclusion or their conclusion for humanity. And again, for continuity of government, which really means the UN or the New World Order, these bases that are established everywhere, just like um, Colorado for Denver, the airport, that Denver in itself most likely will become the new Washington, D.C., since Cheyenne Mountain's not too far away. And by the way, these are all connected with a tram system, uh, underground rail system that uh, can basically go um, almost Mach 2. So from West Coast to East Coast in an hour and a half, someone can be transported completely underground or go to any of the bases. But again, for congressmen or those that have been in agreement that if they're, they're needing to get to underground, this is one of the reasons the Denver airport uh, is facilitated the way that it is. You've heard of the, the murals that are there. Wow. Uh, you walk in, a lot of them are actually maps to show them where they need to go. So wow. it's one of the uh, abilities to go underground when things get bad. Yeah, the um, under these underground tunnels are fascinating. And uh, we've been hearing more and more about people from these that there are indeed um, these tunnels that connect underground. And in South America, uh, there are massive tunnels that connected these ancient sites. These And the Catholic Church, they would go in and they would build their churches on these uh, pagan sites. And there would be tunnel systems underneath that go for miles that connect these. And this is something that seems to be uh, continued. And there seems to be more than just a scientific reason. It seems like perhaps they're following ley lines and uh, there's a consciousness of the ancient paganism and what they do. And it seems like they always are putting their, uh, marking their territory, if you will, with their pagan architecture, their pagan symbols. And it seems to be a much more uh, extensive thing than we would even imagine. And the the amount of underground facilities, uh, you begin to look into this, they're just so massive that we're talking about thousands and thousands of people that regularly uh, work underground. And uh, as you say now, the things that they're doing uh, in, a, in abduction of children and of adults, um, it, it just beggars the imagination. But this is just um, uh, an unbelievable thing when we begin to think about what they're implementing. Right. Yeah, the black budget to build these facilities runs a little over $2 trillion every couple of years. Now, that's a lot of money. But the facilities also, just uh, not just being underground and being you know, able to stand nuclear impact, that the technology that's within them to sustain them the ability to power them, the, the ability to cycle the air and clean the air, the ability to bring water and to bring waste out is so high tech, so advanced that if these technologies were given to us in the public, uh, the air qualities, the ability to have clean water for everyone. I mean, all the technology ever needed to bring everyone to a point that, that uh, no one's starving, no one is sick. Uh, the, the, the rectification or healing of cancers and all the other diseases uh, could be done. Uh, but, but instead, they hold on to these. This is part of their ability to eliminate population. But, you know, when, when we talk about uh, ley lines, when you had mentioned that, when you have two ley lines that come together, you have what's referred to as a vortex. Now, this is a point of energy, and, and let me define all this that a ley line is a energy distribution uh, much like a, um, a tethering 
that the demonic has established years ago or that it is something that maybe God has established and they've tapped into. I'm not quite sure. But in either case, that when you have this ley line, then you have the ability to do things that you wouldn't normally do in the spirit or in the physical. And so many of the military bases all the way back to the Calvary days have have understood this. And many of the Indian tribes were on ley lines. And so the tribes that were removed, that were destroyed during uh, the Indian Wars, that they, where they established the bases, they established them on ley lines. But again, when you have two ley lines that come together, then you have a vortice. You have the ability then, like a Stargate, to enter into another realm or go into another dimension. And so all the military bases, by the way, whether it be Navy, Army, um, Air Force, that is also where the underground bases are at. And they call them dumb. So these are deep underground military bases. And they typically can go about 5,700 feet down, which is uh, quite a bit. They can be 4.245 uh, cubic miles, which is huge. That's absolutely tremendous in its size. So when you say thousands of people, there can be anywhere from 1,800 to 10,000 at the bases. And, you, and so, again, you wonder where all these people are going that are abducted. Well, they're slave labor, they're food, they're experiments. And, again, most of the people who enter into these, that it's, if it's against their will, they never leave again. This is why you don't hear about it. So it's a, it's a cycling. And, again, you know, if you mentioned the Catholic Church, now, the Catholic Church, again, when we look at Jesuits, when we look at the CIA, when we look at uh, central intelligence and, and basically organized religion, they're in, they're in bed with all this. This is part right. of what do. And the Vatican, by the way, in their libraries hold many of the books, the ancient books, that would have revealed this to us. You know, the, the Turks sacked Jerusalem, uh, took a lot of the books, and... and um, and, or excuse me, the, the um, Jesuits came in and, and sacked them from the Turks, and all those books were taken to the Vatican. So there's a lot of information that would have brought us up to speed on what's really going on that we'll just never know. And again, that's one of the reasons we rely on God, why we, we um, surrender ourselves. When, when we do that and we come together and we petition God, then there is divine intervention. And so through the segregation, through the division of religion, whether you want to call yourself a Methodist, whether you want to call yourself a Baptist, whether you're, you know, whatever, the point of it is, is your doctrines are different. And so it's hard to come together as one and petition the Lord. And so they've done a great job of really confusing God's people in the last days. Yeah. You are so spot on with what you're saying there. And, just a couple of weeks ago, John Pounders and I, we went up about an hour north here in Vincennes, Indiana. And in Vincennes, there is the oldest Catholic church in Indiana. The records go back to 1749. It was founded by the Jesuits. And the uh, Gabalt and uh, many of the Jesuit apostles, they came down from Canada. They're some of the earliest, uh, well, it is the earliest Catholic church in Indiana. And we visited this church, and it's unbelievable. Uh, they have a 5,000-book library that date back to the 1700s. And the Eli, Eli Lilly Foundation, they give the grant to build a special vault where these books are under lock and key. And we actually are trying to get permission to go in and look at that, uh, John and I, to do some filming. So if that would happen, I would love to take a look at their books. But after we visited this church, we went to an Indian mound in Vincennes. It's called Sugar Hill Indian Mound. And we climbed to the top of this Indian mound. And when we got up there, to my surprise, there in a perfect alignment on a hill was that Catholic church. And I had no sense when we were there that we were on a high elevation. But when we were on top of that Indian mound, we immediately saw that alignment. So this is a reality that we can observe. And 
whenever you saw it way back then, we've got the Jesuits, we got the ley lines, we've got the 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 pagan um, the mounds and the worship sites. This is something that's been going on for a long time. We can see it in South America. We can see it in China. And this is something that once you have your eyes open to this paradigm, it's everywhere. And uh, it's just an amazing thing. But the Jesuits are absolutely uh, knee deep in this. And they have been for hundreds of years. And we can see this in our area. And I know that people, wherever they're at, they can see this. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, different areas in the Middle East, uh, many of the technologies or many of the secrets and scrolls uh, was one of the reasons for the war was to come and, and take those things. Baghdad, uh, the Sumerian scroll was taken from there, is now an S4 at Area 51, and it is part of the looking glass uh, technology to be able to transport into the dimensions. And, and you look at uh, some of the caves that are described in Afghanistan where some Nephilims have been found and even captured. So when, when this is kept from us, like the Smithsonian Institute, its establishment really was for that, to take the graves of the Nephilim and, and hide them, take away anything that showed, you know, any prehistory uh, before our establishment. And, and who knows what was really before us before. And, and I know that gets into uh, some things that not everybody goes for. But, you know, when, when you have things that are found in China that are 10,000 years old, and I'm not talking about carving dating. I'm talking about it, its reference to where things were at its time. Something's going on. We're not told everything. And by keeping us in the dark, then we're our narrow focus on today's world that we've only advanced so far when reality, we are so far advanced. Um, I mean, military, well, computers, for instance, you know, I was with the Motorola Corporation back in the 80s. And I had a chance to meet those that were in the Scottsdale facility that was the government division. And they were the ones who built the transponders for the NASA Apollo. Now, I, I don't, uh, agree that that the moon landing was was um, complete, but the the technology was developed for the communication for the cameras. And I was told by them that they had developed computers back then in the '60s that if it came to any other uh, race or intelligence, that it was able to reprogram itself that it could communicate to them in their language. Well. We really don't even have that kind of technology now, or at least that they tell us. Well, it turns out that it's been there all along, and Motorola was in the forefront of this. And then Intel was a spinoff of them, by the way. They were executives who actually worked for Motorola that walked away with it and brought it to the public. So everything that we see today around us is only a fragment of what's potential. Yeah, so... Basically, what we're talking about here is our government taking ancient Canaanite scrolls and using, and of course, we know from Scripture that uh, these were the direct um, knowledge taught by the fallen angels. The book of Enoch talks about how the watchers taught this knowledge to ancient people, and they're using ancient Canaanite fallen angel magic to astral project in our military bases. You know, this is just, um, it, it's just uh, boggles the mind to think about this, but this is what we're talking about. Right. And that, and we were warned, you know, and, and, and the old Testament that those who practice such things, divination, sorcery, meaning the ability to astral project or to deal with familiar spirits, that this was like a cancer, that when one was found, that they were put to death. Because it, w once, you, once you establish that type of abomination or sin, then it's infectious to the rest of the people. One man is curious, man is, uh, you know, the curiosity killed the cat. And so when you see power, and, and especially with them not having the knowledge uh, like whether they were in a village or a small town, that if they saw a sorcerer, 
They were absolutely impressed with it. And it was one of the reasons that the Word of God needed to be spread so that we knew to stay away from that type of activity. But today, many of this is also done electronically because it's really venturing into the spirit. It's venturing into the dimensions. That's what CERN's all about. That's what the 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 ability, uh, well, Montauk, for instance, and the Montauk chair using psychics uh, and then amplifying it through radio or electromagnetics, uh, the visions or the powers that uh, the demonic powers that they were utilizing. And it got away from them and, and there was a bad thing that happened. But again, this is... Um, these abominations give the demonic a legal right to us, to humans. And so they've tricked humans, just as you were talking about the Book of Enoch, that the 200 fallen angels gave these technologies. They gave the technology for abortion, for um, crafting of metal uh, weaponry, for different things that, uh, that by ourselves we would not have known. And by engaging in that, because then you come in agreement with it, then they have a legal right to us demonically. And so by luring the bait of Satan, by tricking us into wanting something, and where did we see this? We saw this in the garden, right? The temptations of, of Eve. And it, it hasn't stopped. And so today men have been tricked into wanting more. And so those who have indulged into it, those who, who have grasped the ring, so to speak, have really put us all in a very bad position. And again, that weight falls on you know us who, who understand that. And that's why there is such a great move to remove Jesus, to remove prayer, to remove God, to take the Ten Commandments down, because these this is this is the power of God to stand against evil. And by removing us, then there is no front line to stop them. And one of the most important things that we have to do as the remnant body, we fight against these dark powers and we fight against them uh, in, in heavenly places. And let's say we've got... Uh, someone that's unaware and unprepared um, and has no knowledge of how to deal with this, whether an unbeliever or someone with doors open in their life because of sin or whatever, what kind of devilment, and what we're talking about here is witchcraft on steroids, uh, the actual uh, electronic enhancement of their ability to uh, work these black arts, and what kind of devilment and these people work uh, on the astral plane in attacking someone from the astral plane using this? Well, I, I deal with, with people that are think they're gang-stalked. They're ga they think they're gang-stalked by psychotronics or weaponry of government. Some are, but some actually have open doors or have people who are astral planing to them. So they may be an old lover, they may be an ex-wife, they may be somebody that they um, were at odds with that does sorcery. And so by entering into the spirit realm, you can, there is no distance in the spirit realm, by the way. So here I am in Reno, that if I enter into the spirit, then I could be back where I was in, in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, or in Phoenix, or, or in Europe somewhere. And this, again, is through sorcery. This is the ability to manipulate the, the dimensions. Again, this is something that, is, that us as humans in this time uh, are forbidden to, to use. Now, the military, when they, talk about, um, when they talk about remote viewing, that's really what they're doing. They're, they're somebody that goes into the astral plane, that goes to a location, so they, as a third party, can observe what's going on and then report back. But there's also the communication with familiar spirits. And so a lot of people that, uh, that dabble in witchcraft, that dabble in seances or clairvoyance, uh, it's a necromancy. They think they're talking to the dead, but they're really talking to the demonic. And, and in all cases, whether you use electronics, that technology, 
that when it boils down to it, it's really a scalar technology. Now, scalar is faster than the speed of light. Scalar was basically discovered by uh, Tesla. And the United States Navy and the discovery that it was also capable of being used as a weapon, because, you know, Tesla wanted to be able to give power to the world so we didn't have electrical lines, that it was free. But at the same time, scalar could be used as a weapon. It could, could absolutely take molecules of, any, of steel or iron or, or anything uh, and absolutely bring it down to rubble. That when they took this away, they formed the RCA Corporation. And what they did is they took scalar and hit the technology and brought us what's called transverse, which we know today as the regular electromagnetic spectrum of radio waves, whether it's broadcasting, police frequencies, um, your Wi-Fi, unfortunately 5G that's coming. This, this is a, um, a transverse. This is, this is a generated through electronic means or electromotive force where scalar is completely different. Scalar is able to operate through the earth Scalar, again, as I mentioned, operates faster than a speed of light. So it doesn't fall in the realm of the, of the physics that we've been taught. In fact, everything we've been taught about physics is a lie. And I say that because the periodic table, uh, there's so many more elements on there that we are not, uh, you know, as the public are aware of, that when you use this technology of scalar combined with metals, combined with different materials, and even a spiritual aspect, just like the Montauk chair, you were able to do things that even exceeded the sorcerers of the Old Testament. Because with the great energy behind it, now we can have heart. Now we can create um, earthquakes in the ocean that would wipe out a whole island. We can bring weather in that absolutely transforms uh, like uh, Florida or Texas into nothing more than a big pool. And so the, the means of doing this, again, fall within scalar, fall within this geometry. And then, and then we get into nanotechnology. Nanotechnology in itself, again, is a fallen angel a concept. And what it does is it takes what molecules we do have in the periodic table, and through amino acids and other controls, we're able to keep the electrons, the orbiting uh, sense or the, the structure of the atomic number in itself, and by altering it and changing it, then this element comes into a different form that we've never known before. So spacecraft, whether you want to call it a UFO or flying saucer, the strength, the ability to do what it does, um, the extreme temperatures, even submarines, by the way, they can go to depths now. Uh, that would that would take you in and to levels never known before because now we're under new materials. So when you combine all of this technology together, again, which comes from the fallen angels, it's for a means uh, to try and circumvent God. Because if if the demonic was allowed to do what it wants to do, we would have been destroyed a long time ago. So there is divine intervention. This is God's order. This is God's plan. He's going to see out what he started. He's going to finish what he started. Lucifer, the fallen angels, though they're a problem for us, they're not a problem for him. And he's looking for a man to be obedient to join him in that. When we submit, when we corporately come together, and when we have God behind us, this technology, the fallen angels, uh, the reptilians, whatever you want to call them, the new world order doesn't stand a chance. Yeah. Amen. The vision is what they want amongst us. Yeah. Now, uh, again, with the technology of astral projecting that um, death can occur. You could, you could stop someone's heart remotely, but this is what I tell people who are tormented by someone who's astral planning to you that we see in the Old Testament that a silver cord is an attachment that when someone enters into the spirit, this is like breadcrumbs tethering for them to come back, to follow the string back. Now, I wish no harm in anyone, but if someone is there to 
to violate your children because a, a lot of, you know, whether you want to call it an incubus or succubus spirit, there is a lot of molestation that takes place. Unfortunately, women are usually the victims, though men can as well, especially uh, young boys, that uh, this is something we should not tolerate. We are, we are heirs to the kingdom. We are bought with the price of the blood of Jesus. How dare they do something to us who, who are um, uh, you know, bond servants of Jesus Christ? And so this is something that I do not tolerate. And I, yeah. tell, I tell people, look, it, it, if this is something that is so bad, then in your spiritual warfare, sever that silver cord. Keep them from coming back. They may yeah. be in that plane for a time. They may be lost for a time. But you know what? When we see in the book of, I think it's Corinthians, that where they were appalled that a man had his father's wife, it says, turn him over to Satan for a time in hopes that his soul will be saved. So it's in our punishment. It's in our grieving. It's in our circumstances because of our sin, giving demons a legal right, that we realize that we're in trouble. And then that's when we repent. Sometimes it takes um, a lot to get a person to turn around, just like drug addicts. They have to hit low, low before they come back up again. And it's not true for everybody. But again, um, what I have seen over the years and all the deliverance that I've done, there's a point in time where we've had enough. We're not going to take it anymore. If I'm going to do what God wants me to do, if I'm going to fulfill my time in this earth, then I have to take responsibility and protect myself. Because if if Jesus died on the cross for me, then I have a job and a task to do. And if he did, if what he did on the cross wasn't good enough, then I'm going to walk away. Well, that's not true. What he did is good enough. What he did enabled us. And that's a responsibility. Too much is given, much is expected. And so I just, I want everyone to understand that spiritual warfare is rolling your sleeves up and taking no prisoners. Now, again, we, we wish no harm in anyone, but you need to remember the demonic does not have salvation. The demonic yeah. is evil. The demonic wants to not only kill you, but they want to kill your children. Well, we cannot accept that. And so stand. And I agree 100%. And um, when people are attacking you on the astral plane and in the spirit, you cut that cord, that person can suffer severe injury, harm, or even death. But the way I look at it in scripture, it says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And I am not advocating uh, getting our guns and killing witches but I believe they're fair game when they attack us. And I want everyone to know what you're going to get if you come after our house. It's, we're not going to play nice. Uh, it's going to be war, and we mean war. And when the people know that you're going to take this attitude, they're not going to be wanting to mess with you because they are the ones that are afraid of us. And believers have tremendous weapons to, uh, to fight this thing. And uh, something I want to ask, I don't even know how to ask it, or even if there's an answer to the question, but it boggles the mind to think like Eisenhower not being let in Area 51. Uh, and, you know, the Manly P. Hall, uh, masonry greater, greatest philosopher, he made a statement uh, in The Secret Destiny of America that uh, for many years, people in secret societies have known that the people that are the visible heads of government are not the people that really are running things. Now, how uh, far can we go in knowing who actually controls Area 51? Can we know names? Can we know specific corporations? And also, and of course, this is a really um, two questions, but... I wonder about the balance of power. I know that recently Putin uh, was very public. They, uh, a couple of years ago, they put forth money for a thousand new underground facilities in Russia. They are really gung-ho about this in Russia as much as they are here. And the Russians had uh, their woodpecker project was basically their version of HARP. And how much of this does the Russians have? And how does this play out? 
with this tremendous, uh, the scalar weaponry that can melt people. How does this play out in an international level between uh, Russia, the United States, and China? And I know I've asked probably uh, two dozen questions, but um, how does that all work? Or can we know? Well, I believe that that, uh, the infiltration has been so long that whether it's Putin, whether it's, uh, you know, China, whether we have those in North Korea, even Japan, there is a Freemasonry connection amongst all of them. Yeah. And this was seen quite a bit during World War II. There would be those that uh, were, you know, let's say an American or British, and they ended up in a foxhole with a German, that if they saw the Masonic ring on the soldier's hand, they didn't fight each other. They turned around and killed somebody else. And so there is an agreement Masonically with all these nations, which again falls under Jesuit, which again falls under the demonic, uh, the Luciferian agenda. So I think that they're all in bed with each other. I think there's something to gain. I I think that the Cold War uh, was nothing more than a farce to, to have the American people and to have the Soviet people agree to spend tremendous amounts of money to build the bases, to to build the bombs, to build the weapons, and once that was established, uh, once um, you know when the wall came down, they had already gotten to a point where they didn't need to play the game anymore. But they always need a boogeyman. They always need uh, someone that is going to uh, be the enemy, and so they're always making enemies. Now, unfortunately, the United States people are becoming the enemies. They're becoming enemies of the state. So when it when it comes to um, the United Nations, when it comes to the Luciferian agenda, when when they try and tell you that one president is a good president and the other president is a bad president, and, and by the way, so so we had Obama, and we have Trump, and they're actually talking about now bringing in um, um, Oprah Winfrey. So we have black, white, black. Now we have duality. Now we have the checkered board floor. That just came to me the other day. Yeah. Because they want to do that. Well, that's fine. Let's bring in a black president next time around. But you understand what they're doing here. They believe that evil needs, needs to exist or coexist with good so there can be an exchange of control and power that balances out the world. That's their philosophy. So they've chosen good cop, bad cop, and they're going to continue to do that, if that makes any sense to you, if I answered your question. So it's never going to end. There's always going to be this um, conflict, but they're all on the same side. I look at it this way. You see maybe somebody who's going through a divorce and and the the woman has a defense attorney or an, an attorney and the man has an attorney. And they're in court and they're fighting and they're battling and they're yelling and screaming. And then when it's all over with, the two attorneys go and have a beer together. Well, they really weren't enemies against each other. They were simply representing people and being paid for it. And I see the the world powers the same way. Yeah, and I think that's a very, very good answer. And all the way back into the 1800s, there was the letter from Giuseppe Mazzini to Albert Pike outlining the three world wars and the first two world wars have come in just as scheduled and the third world war according to their plan that would come forth out of the middle east that would result in this global uh one world order which uh the bible speaks of and i think basically what we're going through now is the different secret societies that operate out of freemasonry which is that global structure that they're fighting for control. Uh, They all want basically the same thing, but they're going to fight like cats and dogs to see who the biggest duck in the pond will be. And this, and of course, as believers, we always want to understand that man plans and God laughs, that God is in control, and that we don't want to be overcome with fear and gloom, but we want to be excited to be able to be alive at a time like this, to be able to preach uh, the word of God and to see these things uh, come to fruition 
prophetically. But uh, I think that's a very, very good perspective and understanding on uh, what's going on has been going on for a long time. You know, I, I want to go back to um, when you were talking about the astral plane and taking a stand. But we also must remember that just as grace was extended to us, because there was a time I was an enemy of God before I came to the understanding and believed on to our Lord and Savior, that when they do repent and there truly is a change of their heart, then be ready to receive them. Oh, yeah. So, so always keep that in mind. This isn't about going around and trying to, to slaughter and kill. This is about taking a stand for what is right, what is truth, and, and the order, and which is God's order. Because God is a God of order. He's not a God of disorder. Lucifer is a God of disorder. And, and so when something's out of order, it doesn't come from God. And so we need to make sure that we're not being used as a tool being used as a weapon. Um, religion, unfortunately, is that. That when you get involved into a doctrine that you've you've projected yourself or it's become who you are. And, and by the way, when things really start getting bad, and, and and I say that because because of the book of Revelation, it tells us this, that you know it says men's hearts will fail them for fear. Well, if you've indulged in such a doctrine, whether it's been predestination or pre-trib or any of these others, and that's who, who you've become or that's your religion, you're going to be greatly disappointed. And, and again, that's part of my ministry is to break those, those um, bondages of religion. So again, uh, and by the way, witchcraft, witchcraft comes in, in many forms, mostly in mind control. When you think of witchcraft, you think of, of being able to do uh, hexes, vexes, and spells, and all this other stuff. Yeah, but there's also a great deal of mind control. Now, the the pineal gland is is a we know in the occult or the occult knows it that that is one of the abilities of the human mind to connect to the spirit. And the Catholic Church um, with the acorn. Uh, with the Egyptian uh, hieroglyphs that we see that show the, the very nature of this, we need to understand that witchcraft is behind it. And by rebuking, by repenting, by binding, by casting out, by breaking this off of a person's mind, then they're no longer in captivity of that mind control that comes through witchcraft. Now, witchcraft can come where someone wants to put a spell on somebody, and as crazy as it sounds, it actually does happen, and especially when, it, when, when you have sex outside of marriage, you have two people that have come together, we know then as one flesh by this means. And so there's a soul tie generated. There is a transference of DNA. There is a spiritual connection that was intended to be good by God, but when it's outside of marriage, it is a demonic connection that puts someone in bondage for potentially the rest of their life. So by breaking this off, then we're able to get all of this weight off of us. We're able to see things as they truly, really are, and not the influences or the inspiration of the demonic. Um, I was listening to the news today, and uh, CNN was automatically calling the, the you know, um, what was his name, Cruz, uh, the killer. They were saying the killer or the shooter, the one who killed all of these people. Well, that's not the news's job. He has not been uh, processed through the court system. He hasn't been found convicted. It's a way of brainwashing. It's a way of projecting. It's a way of influencing through the words. So you can, you can um, use words to influence someone in brainwashing. You can use spiritual means. And, of course, Montauk was using electronic means as well as trauma-based mind control, and you're familiar with satanic ritual abuse. This is all a part of mind control based in witchcraft. And when you look at witch witchcraft, when you look at sorcery, sorcery also includes drugs. So if you're taking medications or you're a drug user, you have that open door. That all of this combined together is the exact opposite of God. So divination is an act that is the exact opposite of the Holy Spirit. 
So a divinator uses all such things. And regardless of whatever process or whatever you want to call it, whether it's new age or whether it's a cult meaning, it's still divination. It's still witchcraft. And there will be accountability for it. But those who are under witchcraft, thank goodness for the blood of Jesus Christ that we can be. Amen. So. Amen. Absolutely. And uh, I have a book. Um, it's called The Key of Masonry by Prentice Tucker. It was written way back in the 20s. And he talks about the purpose of ritual. Masonic ritual, which was, of course, based on the the mystery religions. And the, he said the purpose was through repetition to raise the vibrations of the subconscious mind and implant thoughts into that through ritual and symbols to the place where the subconscious mind could be used to override the conscious. And the the thing about real faith. It will focus your mind on reality, on the word of God, and it will give you a true picture and how to deal with it through the cross. And these other uh, things they're using, uh, and that's why they call it uh, television programming. They're putting things in your mind and you talk about vegetizing. Uh, and literally, this is what it is. You're turning your mind into a vegetable, and there are things literally being programmed into it. And now, the the thing that they've learned that they can do, where the vibrations were raised through ritualistic uh, process and through drugs, now the electronic element, well, boy, we can just zip them vibrations up in a hurry. And this thing has just been taken to um, extreme levels. And we see this through the um, uh, the programs of uh, mind control that we see coming down through the government and uh, through the the MK Ultra and these type of things that this is what's going on. So it's just amazing. And that's why as believers, we need to know that uh, we have the victory and uh, that victory is through the cross. Yes. And, and that falls under hypnosis. Yeah. When, when you allow your subconscious, your spirit man, to be open to anything, then you'll receive it. Um, and uh, the, uh, the Montauk, by the way, through electronic means, wanted to speed up the trauma-based mind control that could take up to six months or a year to do uh, because of electronic means they were able to process people in six weeks. Yeah. Uh, so that's why there was such a great amount of people that were run through that facility. Yeah. And Jesse Penn Lewis, um, the lady that wrote War on the Saints, um, something she said in her book uh, was so profound. She said that the greatest danger of Christians is passivity, that letting your mind be inactive uh, this is the greatest doorway that the enemy has. And that's the best advice, I think, as believers we can have. We want to be alert, vigilant, and sober with our, our faith in the cross and in the word, and aware of what's going on, not overcome with fear and not overcoming uh, with uh, letting ourselves be pushed into a bad attitude, but just keeping our, our feet on the ground and uh, being aware, and that's why, why, why we're talking about what we're talking about tonight, to give ourselves uh, the things that we need to know to be able to deal with this. Uh, the Word says that people will perish for the lack of knowledge, and um, these are vital information we need to know. Now, uh, talk a little bit, if you will, about the Dulce area. I know there's a lot going on there in Dulce, New Mexico. And uh, tell us a little bit about um, some of the things that are going on there and have historically. Well, um, you know, when we were talking about uh, Schneider, he was a geologist engineer that was given a job to bore holes uh, at the Dulce facilities. Um, the particular military facility there 
those who were at higher levels knew that there was already um, a hive or a nest of reptilian greys that were underneath them. And when Schneider was brought in, he was not aware of this. And when they started boring the holes to investigate what it would take to build um, more underground facilities, what they were really doing was allowing him to burst into their cavern where these greys were at. So this is known as the Dulce Gray War, and this was in 1979. Now, I think they had already done three holes. They were on the fourth one. They were having trouble with the equipment. And by the way, these holes, um, many of them are uh, 28 feet in diameter. This is technology uh, through the government contracts that most of us weren't aware of. So we're not talking about something small. So he went down in there, as he's done before, to take samples or investigate what's going on. There were some other um, people that went with him because it's being a high security area. They had security with them. Well, when they went down there, they, they then went nose or face to face with Grays. And there was a uh, battle that was in exchange that somewhere between 66 and 67 of our soldiers, of our military were killed. Um, Schneider himself was wounded. He, I think it was his left hand. He had lost fingers. He, he actually was hit in the chest and it split him open and he actually got cancer from it. But that was the first um, embarkment onto that particular type of gray. Now, the other grays that they were dealing with before, apparently there's different types. In my opinion, uh, there is no good cop, bad cop. If, if there's something that is a fallen angel, if there's something of hybrid that is not sanctioned by God, then blood is thicker than water. We cannot trust them. So regardless of whatever breed this was, this was something that had an attitude and to fight back. Whatever took place afterwards, there was an agreement, there was a contract, a treaty, and with the facility there, they then joined with them, now having that underground facility as experimentation, cryogenics, biochemical uh, warfare, uh, housing of both uh, reptilian and U.S. And again, one of the main floors has been specific to what we call soul capturing. Now, we're tripart beings, meaning that we have a body, we have a soul, which is your personality, your, your emotions, your will, and then we have the spirit that's put into us by God. God is the God of spirits. When you capture the soul of somebody, what you're doing is you're, you're taking the essence of them. So a lot of the cryogenic uh, work that's being done now, we know that Walt Disney had that done, that what they had done is they had actually captured his essence, his, his uh, so to speak, his soul. They're able to maintain this. Now, they can also upload this into computers. The, the higher echelon or the occult or, or the, um, the Illuminati, those that have, uh, you know, let's say in Hollywood that are, that are well-financed, they have the ability then to transfer their essence or their soul into someone else. We, we also know this with the Queen of England, that by doing so, they can also capture the souls of humans. Now, what does this mean in the last of the days, or what does it mean in, in the coming of Jesus Christ? Well, that, that's, a, that's a very good question. But at the same time, uh, we see that when the return of Christ, that the graves open up, uh, the sea will give up their dead, will be caught up in the air. So regardless of whatever is happening to them now, I don't believe that they're lost for forever. I believe that there will be an intervention. But in the meantime, we're dealing with a circumstance that with the capturing, what are they doing? What are they, what is their means? Well, through cloning, through, through hybrid um, uh, DNA uh, manipulation, that when we see Armageddon, when we see the, the great war that takes place against Jesus Christ, we see great numbers. Now, is, is that what they're doing? They're building soldiers for this last day to come against Christ? I, I don't know. But in either case, this is an atrocity. This is an abomination. This is crimes against humanity. Because we're talking about children. 
we're, we're talking again, teenagers or, or anyone of any other age. Mexico, for instance, uh, not being too far from there, that many of the villages that uh, the children are missing. They've come in and they've, they've taken them, they've confiscated them. Uh, many of them, unfortunately, were killed before even being transferred over into the United States, put in freezer trucks. Uh, the FBI, though not, not every agent within the federal government is on the take. There are good and there are bad. There have been those that uh, really do believe in the Constitution that have come across these trucks. They have tried to intervene and stop, but they've been given the orders to stand down. So there's a transportation um, of, of human beings, mostly children, from Mexico into the United States, into Dulce, to be used as food for the processing, for the experimentation. Now, when you have such a large facility of this, you're potentially talking about thousands and thousands of hybrids, thousands and thousands of grays. Then we look at all of the underground facilities around the world, Again, thousands of hybrids, thousands of grays, all potentially to be released at one time as a military army. Now, again, I'm, uh, this isn't to bring fear into anyone. This is to give an understanding that whatever they're going to do, uh, this is one of the means that they'll do it. And so that means that we need to be prepared in our spirit. Now, in my book, Second Heaven Invasion, in the last chapters of it, I describe that. I describe that when we come across something as, as so, this is not a particular demon, though when it does die, it could become an evil spirit because it wasn't ordained of God. It's something that is an abomination because that's really what the Nephilim were when they died, that they, the disembodied spirits became the evil ones. But this is still an entity that has a free will that's in front of you. And many people, just the very sight of them would, would be so ghastly that it would be hard to take. But to understand that this entity in front of you, that this is something that we're not really prepared to do, that this is when we fall back into the Holy Spirit. We allow God to take command. We, we have the faith and the courage without fear to stand against them. This is all I can tell you to do. This is why I'm trying to do what I do in my ministry is to prepare people for this. Now, demons, you know, I bat them over the head all day long. They're, they're cockroaches, you know. They're just some th something to step on and throw out. But when you have something that's 10 foot tall in front of you, which may be carrying demonic spirits in them, but it in itself is still a living creature that has a will that most likely is evil. So I think that uh, what we're going to see in time is more of this. Now, there's also been reports of the black-eyed children, uh, you know, we, we have uh, Sasquatch, we have different things in the world that that, uh, that uh, people see all the time and report. And in the old days, they thought you were crazy, but more people were starting to understand this. But in every case, I want you to understand this, in every case, there has been a spiritual transfer. There has been not a possession, but an infection of either fear or something that, that brings nightmares and night terrors. And so whatever these things are, uh, again, being evil, they have the potential of projecting evil. And I think that that's what they're trying to do. So whether they're, going, whether they're taking the souls of these individuals and trying to use them as uh, demonic, I, I don't know. But in either case, as I've done before in some of my past shows when I've... Um, uh, stood against them, that I pray for the release of these children, of these people who are held captive. Uh, different floors, I think there's seven or eight floors in uh, Dulce in itself. One is strictly cryogenics. One, one is housing of military. Uh, one is housing of, of alien. Uh, then, you, then you have mind control. You have uh, even one of uh, the, the particular um, uh, different uh, manipulations of the DNA to create whatever they're going to do or create in itself. That, again, when, when you look at Dulce, that in itself is probably one of the, the most or the, the, the greatest evil of all the bases. 
because again, it was already established as a base that was already doing that by the Greys. And by the United States government coming into agreement with it, um, how heartbreaking is that? To think that, that human beings are willing to sell out other humans. And again, you know, when we see in scripture that their conscience is seared, this is at a point of possession. So those who are in control of these facilities are possessed. They're not necessarily demonized. If you're demonized, you still have the ability to be delivered. You still have um, a way out. If you are possessed, then you've sold your soul. And and though though God has per, uh, promised a way out for all of us, you may be so encapsulated, you may be so um, um, deceived that you cannot see truth when it's in front of you. That is a possession. That's a terrible circumstance. Um, personality disorders are unfortunately like that. When you have multiple personalities, when you have like borderline personality disorder or some of the others, you have so many different fragmentations of your spirit or your soul, it's hard for you or for the core person to focus on Jesus, to understand who God is. There's still a tremendous amount of fear. And fear is the base control of the population. Fear is one of the base controls of religion to bring condemnation uh, upon people. The Catholic Church, unfortunately, that's one of their, their great tools. So that's Dulce in a, in a basically wrapped up into one that um, it should have been eliminated a long time ago. And, and you know, if, if the truth ever does come out, and the people that live in those areas, um, be ready to receive those people. Understand that they're they're tremendously hurt. They're traumatized. Uh, you talk about post-traumatic stress. Uh, satanic ritual abuse is one of the worst things you can ever do to a human. And and I think that that's uh, again what Dulce is. Yeah, and there was a movie. I think the name of it might have been Essence. It was one with one of the leading male actors. I can't remember which one it was. But the basic uh, idea behind this movie was when this individual died, they were able to put their soul into a computer. And uh, did a show with Timothy Alberino not long ago, and we were talking about the possibility, and I think it's a real one, of a robot or a computer to be possessed by a devil. We're talking about paradigms of understanding here that we're going to have to take things to another level here in our in the things that we're considering. And there was another movie. This is goes way back to the 80s. It was called The Serpent and the Rainbow, and it dealt with voodoo. And it uh, it dealt with this concept of how they will have these jars and they will have these jars that they decorate with their occult symbols. And literally they claim that they have the souls of individuals that they trap in these jars. And this is the ritualistic accomplishment of what you're talking about in a modern uh, electronically enhanced uh, manner. And this is right in the Bible. Um, I'll read the scripture here in Ezekiel 13, beginning in verse 18. And it's so encouraging because in this scripture, it talks about the hunting and the capturing of souls, but it also takes about God liberating them and letting these souls go. But this is what the scripture says, Ezekiel 13, 18. It says, and say, thus saith the Lord God, woe to the women that sue pillows to all armholes and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls. Will ye hunt the souls of my people, and will ye save the souls alive that come unto you? And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die, and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies? Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and I will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. 
It's right there in the Bible that they were actually able to attack and make the souls fly. And I know we have ministered to people that uh, were satanically ritually abused, and they will talk about the actual attacks that will want to pull them into the astral plane themselves. And there has to be specific prayer to seal the body, soul, and spirit so that these entities and these individuals cannot pull them into the astral plane. And this is very, very scriptural. And we're seeing this now in a level that is, uh, you know, it's just something we need to be aware of because it's here, whether we like it or not, it's here. It's a reality, and it's right here in, in the Word of God. Yes. Astral rape is actually one of the issues that I deal with quite often. Oh, yeah. Someone's actually taken, stolen, as you were just describing there, into the astral plane and raped by demons and then placed back later. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there are also um, even ministries uh, that are not ministries at all, but were actually uh, astral projecting to so-called do ministry and deliverance. And uh, that's just another thing we've uh, we got to watch out. Not all that jumps is jackrabbit. But Sister Donna tells me here, we are way up into the 20s on questions. And I'm sure that our listeners can ask you better questions than I can. So I'm going to ask Sister Donna here to join uh, the Midnight Ride and uh, begin to have our listeners throw some questions at you. Um, are you there, Sister Donna? Yes, I am. All right. Well, take us into some questions here for Scott. And I think probably this is just about all the questions we'll be able to answer. We have about 25. Yeah. So, so. we'll cap those and we won't be able to take any more. So. Take us away, Sister Donna. Okay, Allie wants to know, are you familiar with the Andy Pirro story? He was a Montauk boy who was tortured and molded to be a super soldier. His story is horrific. Is there any knowledge of his whereabouts now or if he's even still alive? Well, I don't know of him specifically, but I've dealt with uh, two super soldiers now. Um, Holly, you may be familiar with. But um, the the course of programming that they went through is horrific. The fragmentation, them losing their childhood, becoming an agent of death or spying. But um, <clears throat> these individuals, once, once they're programmed the way they are, the programming doesn't always stick. And they can start to become um, flashbacks of the past or those things that had happened to them. So whether this person was taken and abducted or maybe themselves, once they came to the realization of what they had done prior, maybe seek to go somewhere else to deal with it, I don't know. I, I'm not familiar with them. Um, again, mostly what I do is deliverance and um, some of the, the higher technology. But uh, again, he's, this would not be the only person. There, there have been so many that have been lost. And... You know, again, be ready for if you do come across them or have the ability or the, um, the grace to pray for them, please do, because they've been terribly abused. Thank you, Scott. And no, we um, we are not familiar with his case either. But uh, I will say this. We always say whatever the enemy has messed up, God can fix so we give God great credit for being able to heal people like a super soldier. So I'm praying that he has found that healing. I um, have a question um, from me, actually. Um, I know how we would answer this, but I'd like to hear your take on it, Scott. How can you tell the difference between the demonic and other fear problems? I know people come to you and we've talked about this, but perhaps you can answer that. Well, do you mean in the human sense, if it was a, an altar? or Well, many people come to uh, us and they have, uh, and some of them have intentionally had this fear injected into them, but 
some think things have happened to them. In essence, they really haven't. But how can you tell the difference between if it's a demonic problem or if it's just their fear? Well, very good question. And I've talked about this before. One of the things that the demons do or a curse within the family is when you have rejection, when you have abandonment, when you have a parent that was not a parent and subject the child to circumstances that uh, gave them fear, gave them abandonment uh, issues, then that has programmed them and set them up for a failure then to experience emotions that instead of being steady, have extreme ism to it. So it may not necessarily be a demon. It may be what the demons did to set them up to be their own worst enemy. One of the things that I have found that if, if there's a manifestation and it is a fear demon, that if there is um, a point in time where there is such an emotion that uh, that tears come out, because you can have demons, um, you would be surprised how what big babies they really are. When you really call them on the carpet, when you really put the sword to them, they crumble like anyone else, and they'll squirm and they'll fight and they'll cry and they'll do everything. But a human will cry the tears will actually come out. If it is demonic, there will not be any tears. That manifestation does not take place. So that's, it's one of the means. But again, um, when I'm praying for someone, I usually get a word of knowledge that that is the case. The, every case that I deal with, I don't have a formula, though I have a guideline when I ask questions, because everyone is different. Every personality is different. Everyone's constitution is different. Some people can with, withstand abuse and it never bothers them. They just have a bad day where someone can just have someone say something uh, derogatory to them and it destroys them for the day. So every case is different. So I, I really can't just say across the line. But when you have somebody that is self-destructive, that their emotions are being generated by themselves. I, I think that's sort of obvious by the questions that I ask. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Very good answer. Um, Allie mentioned the uh, Johnny Gosh case, G-O-S-C-H, and um, she thinks he was ritually sacrificed or imprisoned um, as a dumb as a pedophile slave or something like that. But there's a very good documentary on that on Netflix. It's uh, what happened to Johnny Gosh, I believe is the name of it. It's a really good documentary. And I believe it ended up showing that he was alive after the fact. But um, I'm, I know there's many cases like his and I had to be kind of selective on the questions because John has to cut this off at a certain time. So uh, another question is, um, and it was sort of on the same line, but a little bit different. How can you discern that a person's really been targeted or if it's their imagination? How do you discern that? Well, regardless of the circumstances, I always receive them with an open mind. One of the things that brings healing is to listen. Amen. Because many of the people have tried to talk to the church, they've tried to talk to their spouse, they've tried to talk to their friend, and no one wants to listen to them. They just think they're nuts. Well, whether it's imaginary or not, it is still a problem, something that needs to be addressed. Because the, the pain that a person feels, the battle's in the mind. And whether it's real or not, they're still being tormented. So as, as, I, as they come to me and I address the issues... I systematically go through with my questionnaires and find out um, their their background. Was their was mom was their mother a practicing witch? Was daddy a Freemason? Were, were was this person um, sexually active before marriage? Was there occultism? Did they, did they do the Ouija board? So when, when I analyze all the questions and, and the history and, and their potential generational curses, then I'm able to determine whether it's human or demonic. If it's demonic, then that's a plus because I can break that and cast it out. 
if it truly is a targeting situation where they're being gang stalked, all I can do is bring the person out of the fear that the demons, because demons are opportunists, by the way. When, when you have human infraction, then you have a violation against God's people. That is an entry point for the demonic. So once we once that's renounced and broke and closed the door, then the person's countenance comes up and is stronger now. So when they go into the world or they go back into the, the fight, so to speak, and they deal with the gang stalkers, there's more courage. And that's almost immediate. So it's, it's one of the bases is to get them to understand who they are. Who is Johnny? Who is Mary? Well, if they believe on to Jesus Christ, then they are a child of the Most High God. And they need to understand that they have worth, that they are treasured, they are adored, they are loved by the Most High God. They, they are just absolutely a part of the kingdom. And so in this understanding of who they are, that is one of the advancements that helps me know whether I was on target or not by the courage and the strength that comes out of it. Yes, that's a wonderful answer, Scott. And we also uh, do that in our ministry of when we are trying to help someone to be set free. We do ask a lot of questions and we have some questionnaires and we have a personal history. So we also ask a lot of questions to determine, but you are so correct on the listening aspect. That's why we spend so much time on the phone is the listening and read the emails and try to get to know people. You just can't judge something uh, just on face value by hearing one little bit of their testimony. You have to really be patient and listen. So thank you so much for your patience and all you do to help people. Uh, another question of Allison, what kind of experiments are they doing? I know of genetic, but what about temporal? Well, most everything now is through electronic means, meaning that they're able to, you know, the, the term is psychotronics or voice to skull or carrier. And, and so we are, we are electrical, we are chemical. And, and through chemical means or through electronic means, meaning electromagnetics, radio waves, they're able to reprogram, they're able to wipe out parts of memory, they're able to put memories in that really didn't exist. And that can be done in a drop of a hat now. They've advanced to the point with supercomputers, uh, especially um, uh, with the qubit and, and the ability to bring in processing that can ultimately change. So, so otherwise, when they map an individual, all of us have a, a personality. We are who we are. When they come in and they map an individual, what they're doing is they're all kind of looking into their soul, the eyes of the window of the soul, and, and then they're able to manipulate and, and change and alter from that point. So from a fixed point of establishing who the person is, they can either transfer them to someone else or they can split them or make them just become uh, an enhancement of who they are. Because if they have somebody that has, let's say, the ability to um, – to, to have a, an incredible processing, problem-solving memory, they may be an asset to them. So they wouldn't necessarily want to destroy that. They want to enhance it. So through, again, uh, electro means or chemical means is what they've been doing. So. Okay. Um, do uh, Percentage-wise, uh, can you say uh, approximately how many people that claim they've been abducted by aliens have proof of their abduction? Well, if they come to me, um, they're going to have a specific spirit of an iniquitous pool, meaning that they're always going to leave the door open for the revisit of this entity or alien or whatever it is, because they don't have to be taken from their otherwise a physical um, assembly in front of them, they can be taken, transported out. My lab is, is how that's done. But um, anyone that has been abducted is going to have post-traumatic stress. Anyone that's been abducted is going to have some DNA changing. That doesn't mean that you're turning into someone else. It means that there's been an experiment 
to see what what you are and what they can try and turn you into. So so personality changes. Are you one person one minute and then another person another? Um, are you subject to key things such as phrases, colors? Colors are big, uh, even sounds. So so when there's an abduction, you're going to have these issues. And um, fear is um, in everybody that is abducted because it's something that is so traumatizing. And again, when, when, a, when someone is traumatized, it's an open door for fear demons. This is why, you know, some people think it's funny to scare little children, stand behind the corner. When the child comes around, you jump out and go, boo. Well, that's the worst thing you can do. That fracturing or that shaking of the spirit at that very moment is an open door. And so anyone that's been abducted is going to have that. Um, but um, again, when when we're talking about mass numbers or percentages, I would say it's going to be all of them. Okay. Um, John had a question. Do any of the presidents know about the dumbs or about the aliens? Yeah, you know, they, they're, they're definitely brought up to speed. But, but as I mentioned earlier, that there's at least 15 to 20 clearances above them. So that comes under the need to know basis. Because one, there needs to be approval for funding. There may be, um, there may be projects the, the, the president himself wants to, uh, to enact. And the only way to do it is through the technology that's in the basis. But does he know everything or will they know everything? No, they never will. They never will. Okay. Um, Scotty asked a question on something you said. How do the train trains do mock speeds with no sonic boom? Um, vacuum chamber. By lowering the the chamber's vacuum, I I used to be a, a vacuum specialist. I when I worked for Motorola, I contracted out later on to Intel's and uh, General Electric and some of the others. When you lower uh, the the um, atmospheric pressure, right now at sea level, you're at fourteen point seven pounds psi of pressure. If you take that down to just a few pounds or virtually nothing there is no more um, sound. There is no more one molecule hitting another molecule. There is, there, that, that whole science goes away. So that is uh, the, the basic concept behind it. The other two is the materials that the trams, because this is a, a magnetic or magno levitation. So the, the trams are about three quarters of an inch off of a single rail. And the streamlining in the material in itself also uh, aids to that. So, but vacuum is one of the uh, processes. Okay, Angie wants to know, you mentioned the murals in Denver Airport are, there, are possibly a map. Is there any other message they are meaning to portray? Yes, um, the big one that everyone sees when they first come in looks like, um, looks like um, uh, tribulation. You see people wearing masks. You see AK-47s. You see children being rounded up. It's a message to us all of what they're going to do to us. And that's yeah. at the airport. Got some really strange things in those murals. Yes. Okay, Caesar has a question, and it's very personal for him. What can you do if you're a victim of those beings called aliens, and you see they have cloned a relative, and you do not know who to tell because they can ridicule and those of the elite are involved. I think that's happening to me, um, speaking from for C Caesar. Right. Well, cloning means that they take your DNA, but they didn't take your spirit. You are a separate individual um, ordained by God or a spirit put into you the moment of conception. Um, but that doesn't relieve the fact of trying to talk to somebody else. That is a hard question that I really don't have an answer for. Just... Um, being in a group of like-minded individuals, a support group, uh, there are different uh, websites. Uh, that's what I would do. But here's what you need to be careful of, is that there are shields, there are trolls, 
There are those who infiltrate those organizations or the targeted individual websites. And, and some of this is trying to round up those who got away. When you have satanic ritual abuse or you have occult uh, programming, some people get away. And so there are ministries, just as was uh, being mentioned earlier, that yeah. uh, are not true. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to round up, uh, make an account or count how many that are loose and need to be brought back again. So yeah. this is this is where we need to fall back into faith uh, in Jesus Christ. Your your friend, your comforter. Uh, is only in God. My my saying on my show is Jesus plus nothing. And I say that because man will always fail you. So yeah. if you're looking for a human friend to, to lean on, you're, you're probably not going to find it. Amen. Amen. And uh, people want to know, uh, Amanda wants to know if there's any tunnels in Canada. Oh, yes. Absolutely. The base, There's just as, just as many bases in Canada. Again, wherever you have a military installation, um, and, and also, by the way, like Las Vegas, uh, the town, there is a tram that runs all the way into Las Vegas underneath, um, I think it might be the Lexor, the one next to it, that goes into Area 51. So any, any place that has uh, a very large um, hotel, anywhere that has a large conference center, anywhere where there's medical facilities such as hospitals, uh, where they <coughs> transport, you know, the, any injured or whatever, um, those will be there. So Canada, yes, absolutely, un unfortunately. Okay, John lives in New Mexico, and he used to work at the near the uh, Dulce. So um, he's seen many uh, Native Americans in the area telling of these strange stories of the creatures of Chimera. So could they be doing genetic experiments down there? Yes, uh, Chimera or Chimera. There's, um, we, we also have um, chupacabras. There's different things that have been around for a long time that the Indians have seen for hundreds of thousands of years. So whether it comes from uh, Los Alamos, Dulce, whether it's been something that has been in the hills there prior, I'm not sure, combination of the two. But um, yes, the Indians have been quite aware of this. And in fact, um, the Valley of the Sun, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, that's what the Phoenix Rising was all about. The, the totem poles, by the way, were sacrifices in order to keep these creatures from attacking them, that they would dig a hole, they would throw a child into it, and then drop the totem pole on top of it as a sacrifice, as appeasement to these particular creatures. Wow. So many things we don't know because we don't live in those areas. Um, Allie wants to know what's the connection between the ley lines and the Bermuda Triangle. There's also uh, a Michigan Triangle, and which has the same mysterious anomalies. And uh, are these uh, underwater ley lines or ley line intersections? Well, ley lines will be in the ground. So whether it's the, under the ocean or not, it's still the same thing. Now, the Bermuda Triangle was, was activated. Now, remember I said earlier about vortices were two cross over. When you have human sacrifice at a point where the two cross over to be a vortice, then you have a spiritual open of demonic activity. So the Bermuda Triangle was actually triggered by the slave trade that when the ships were coming over and the, the slaves that were sick that were not going to be a, going to bring a dollar at auction. They were chained and they were thrown overboard. And there were mass killings. Uh, the the uh, documents or the books or the um, um, the, the, the books that the, the ships had to have showed that there were less numbers when they came into port than when they started out. And here it turns out that the Bermuda Triangle was just that. There was such a mass killing of slaves at that time that there was a demonic right to it. So the I don't remember exactly what uh, Christian organization that was that, that came together, but uh, there were several countries, and they came and they prayed and they broke that curse off. Because you notice that we haven't heard anything wrong about the Bermuda Triangle lately. You know, there was lots during the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and even into the 70s 
but it was in the early 80s when that took place or maybe somewhere around that. And we just haven't heard about that anymore. So it is possible to take back uh, that, that ground. Yes, I believe that too. Take back Amen. the territory. Mm-hmm. Amen. Uh, Dawn um, lives in Kingman, Arizona, uh, and she works uh, right on Route 66. She wonders if you've heard anything about that because there's a, she works uh, by the airport and there's a train that runs through it and it's gotten really weird um, in the last few years and people that she's known for years have literally lost control, you know, stuck on stupid. Wondered if you'd heard anything about Kingman, Arizona. Well, that's sort of happening everywhere. But but Kingman was also the site of a of a crash, an alien uh, crash that was every every bit as uh, uh, technological uh, finding as anywhere in New Mexico or even in Arizona. But um, when when we, when you talk about areas that have been taken over by the demonic, because you know even though I'm here in Reno, um, gambling, prostitution. These are areas, because Kingman is not too far from from the Las Vegas area, that the influences can bleed over to it. So the takeover, whether it's going to be mind control, psychotronics, whether probably a lot of drug use there, Kingman isn't exactly um, uh, one of the best places, but it's not the worst, I know. But, you know, by the way, when when I last time I went through Kingman, um, which was only what well, was it Christmas time? And I was leaving Flagstaff and came across, and then headed up towards uh, Las Vegas and into Reno. That uh, the 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 void I could feel the void. It was like there was something missing there, like uh, like there had been a great capturing. So there's also been discussion too that the reason the craft crashed there was because of the ley lines that sometimes they have in itself a, a uh, interference with the craft. And so that may be the connection there. Other than that, I'm not sure what to say. Okay. And I do apologize, but we do have to be sure we stop just right on time here tonight because of where John is streaming. So I have to be selective on some of these questions. So I apologize if I don't get your question. But before that, Scott, could you please just give your contact info one more time? So we'll be sure that yeah. And have Scott, that. tell us about um, the books that you've written that are available and how they can get them. Because I know you've written some really good books. So yeah. Well, my my first book was on borderline personality disorder, and the book is entitled BPD, which is borderline personality disorder, BPD or Jezebel. And I say that because the Jezebels that are within the church and the witches that are within the church. You can say that they have a personality disorder because they basically sold their souls. Now, it doesn't mean that someone who is a borderline is is necessarily evil. Unfortunately, they're victims of evil. So the book that I've written about it has to do with that particular circumstance. Second Heaven Invasion, my second book, is about deliverance. It's about curse breaking. It's about the circumstances that are happening to us today, how to deal with them. At the back of the chapters, especially deliverance chapters, I have the prayers, I have the phrases, the words, or uh, the system that I use as as examples. And then I condensed it down uh, one more for missionaries. So when you go to to a village, you know, let's say in South Africa or somewhere, you're dealing with uh, witch doctors, you're dealing with shamans. So I've got some information that's kind of focused on that, on hoodoo voodoo. And uh, I have some others in the works, but uh, uh, that'll be probably a couple of months out. But again, my website, tinfoilhackclub.com, as strange as it sounds, that with the technology background that I have and then with deliverance combining together, um, when I've tried to bring this information out, they've always jokingly said that I must be wearing a tinfoil hat. Well, if you think I'm crazy, then I'm going to embrace that. So I called it Tinfoil Hat Club. But again, uh, Blog Talk, Mixler, Podomatic, YouTube, if you go to tinfoilhatclub.com, the links will all be there for you to, to, uh, to listen to those shows. Now, on the front, I also have four free downloads of curse breaking, of deliverance prayers, self-deliverance, spiritual warfare that I would recommend to download 
that if you are being spiritually attacked, I also, by the way, if you're financially strapped, I'll send you my books PDF uh, via email. So no one goes without because it's very important for you to have all this information. Okay. Um, let's see. One more here. Uh, what should a person do if they're face to face with an alien uh, or spirit? Rebuke it. Claim the name of Jesus Christ. Period. Okay. And I had someone else that wants to know um, a question about astral projection from David here in simple terms. So keep it short, David. We just have a very few minutes here. What is astral projection? Well, it's the actual projection of your soul from your body into the astral plane is would be the the truncated definition of that and i want to get a question in with scott here um before we get off you got four minutes four minutes how do the underground nuclear tests that took place out in jackass flats uh, does this play into this whole dynamic of the underground um, activity with the fallen ones? Is there a connection here? Well, with every nuclear detonation was an infraction into the physics. So anytime that there was a nuclear detonation, there was also a portal that was opened up much like um, um, the, the um, uh, CERN, because that's what CERN is, is basically a controlled nuclear detonation opening a porthole. So they were getting humans, the military, to to create a weapon, but at the same time giving them an access to allow things to come in and out that normally could not have done so. Wow. Well, and that's kind of personal for me. My dad's brother was a nuclear physicist. He worked out at Jackass Flats in the nuclear testing and um I would like to be able to drill him a little bit now for what he knows, but that's not possible. But I guess we're just about to the point where we need to wrap up. And I just really want to thank you for a great show. Tremendous information and uh, tremendous help for people. So, Scott, thank you a lot. And if we wait another year to get you back on, shame on us. That's all I got to say. But and thanks a lot. Any closing thoughts you'd like to leave us with tonight, Scott? No, the, the last question about if we come across a grave, what do we do? Again, stand in the name and the authority and the blood of Jesus Christ, period. Okay? Amen. And just to let people know, in case they've never heard us before, our website is www.fojcradio.com, and we also have a YouTube channel, uh, FOJC Radio, the one with the open door. And thank you so much for all your wonderful questions. We have just a couple of minutes here. And Scott, we really appreciate the work you do with these people because there is a big, big need and not very many people that are really called to do this type of ministry. Uh, and we all have different expertise, you might say, in different areas. So we try to work together with others who know more than what we do about certain areas. And our book title is victims to victors and that's the way you approach it too we approach healing in a victor standpoint that we are victors through christ and what he's already done for us on the cross and that's the best advice i could give anybody is count on what jesus has already done for you no matter what your circumstance is so we're waiting on John to come back. John, are you there? And he will. Be I'm here. I'm here, guys. I'm I'm over here. We're, I'm listening. I'm. You got people in this room full. If you guys can hear the music over in the other room, they got karaoke going on. Mm -hmm. So as you can imagine, I've been very silent for the whole thing. But we uh, the conference is over, and we got this room closing out. So you guys end it whenever you're ready, and I'll hit the stop broadcast. But high five, guys! Great show, and we really enjoyed it. High okay. five, everybody! Bless you. Good night, all. Bye-bye.